You might recall that we spoke about numbers in Hebrew way, way back. It might have been lesson one. It might have been lesson two. Either way, it was a long time ago. We talked then about letters being numbers. That's right. The Hebrew alphabet functions also as numbers. But did you know that Hebrew also has cardinal numbers? Or how about ordinal numbers? Well, did you? So today we're going to talk about those cardinal and ordinal numbers. What's a cardinal number? Well, it's a straightforward number. One, two, three, four, five, etc. Ordinal numbers help you see the order. Get it? Ordinal, order, ordinal, order. Yeah, you get it. So let's dive in and see what these numbers are like. Now, these cardinal numbers have masculine and feminine. They have absolute and they have construct forms. So you'll be able to familiarize yourself with these construct and, and absolute forms because you know your nouns. You know your construct nouns. You know your absolute nouns. We've gone over that already. And if you've forgotten, well, you can go back to previous lessons and brush up on the content. But what's important to recall here is the spelling of one and the spelling of two. After that, it's pretty straightforward, three through 10. The masculine uses dalet, echad, one, absolute. Achad, one, construct. The feminine uses tav, achad, one, feminine, absolute. Achad, one, feminine, construct. Note that in feminine, the construct and the absolute are identical. Now this makes sense. We've seen before that feminine endings like to use tav. Not always, but it does like it. So it makes sense. We have tav here with the feminine. It all just comes together. I love it when a plan comes together. Shanayim, two, masculine, absolute. Shanay, two, masculine, construct. Shatayim, you should tie your laces. Shatayim. Let me know in the comments, what are your favorite mnemonic devices to help you memorize your vocabulary? Put it in the comments down below. Shatay. Shatayim is feminine, absolute. Shatay, feminine, construct. So that's one and two, respectively, across masculine and feminine, across absolute and construct forms. Three through ten are pretty straightforward. Shalosh, three. Absolute, shlosh, three, construct. The only difference here is the comets reduced to a shava. In feminine, shlosha, it's got the hay, the comet's hay ending. Typical of feminine, shlosha. This one's the construct form, feminine. Again, we see the tav at the end, suggesting, hey, it's feminine, but it's construct, so we see the reduction in the vowels. So that's the, the number three, masculine, feminine. Arba, four, masculine, absolute. Arba, masculine, construct, four. Note that these are identical. They don't change. Arba'a, four, feminine, absolute. Arba'ath, four, feminine, construct. Chamesh, five, masculine, absolute. Chamesh, five, Masculine construct. Note the reduction in the vowels. Chamisha. Five feminine. Absolute. Note the comets hey ending. Chamesha. Five feminine construct. Note the reduction in vowels, but also the tav ending. Shesh. Six. Masculine. Absolute. Shesh. Six. Masculine. Construct. Note that the absolute and the construct are identical. There's no change. Shisha. Six. Feminine. Absolute. Shesha. Six. Feminine. Construct. Sheva. Seven. Masculine. Absolute. Shiva. Seven. Masculine. Construct. Shiva. Seven. Feminine. Absolute. Shivath. Seven. Feminine. Construct. Shimonei. Eight, masculine, absolute. 
It's like crazy eights. Show me the money. Show me money. Eight, masculine construct. Note that the masculine, absolute, and construct are identical. Shimona. This is eight, feminine, absolute. Shimonath. Eight, feminine construct. Tesha. Nine, masculine, absolute. Tisha. Nine, masculine construct. Tisha. Nine, feminine, absolute. Tishath. Nine, feminine construct. For the first time in our cardinals, we don't see a sheen, we see we see a scene. Eser. Ten. Masculine. Absolute. The construct is the same. Eser. Asara. This is ten. Feminine. Absolute. Asereth. Ten. Feminine. Construct. Now let's go over a few notes about these cardinal numbers, especially when it comes to the number one. See, number one is typically going to be the absolute form unless it occurs in front of an absolute noun that is typically but not exclusively plural and so because it's a construct it's going to include the word of in translation as a construct chain so for example achath habanot one of the daughters notice the absolute is plural it's also definite but because we're using one, we're not gonna put the one of the daughters. No, it's just one of the daughters. So that's how the construct works. Otherwise, without the construct, the word one functions as an adjective and can go either before or after the noun. Bath achath, one daughter. Habath ha acha, the one daughter. Remember, adjectives follow when they are attributive, they follow the noun, they modify, and they agree in all three. Definiteness, number, and gender. So when we have habath ha achath, notice that one appears after the noun, so it's looking like attributive, and it agrees in gender, it agrees in definiteness. Now, you remember the dual form, right? Like in heaven, Shemayim, using the dual, the diphthong. So the number two uses the dual. Okay. Now if it's if it's masculine, it uses a noon, Shemayim. If it's feminine, it uses Tav, Shatayim. Now the numbers two through ten are classified, or they function as nouns, whereas the number one. It functions as an adjective. So keep that in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that the number two will agree in gender with any noun that it modifies, or rather any other noun that it might be related to. And when it comes to constructs with the number two, there is no change in apparent meaning, none whatsoever. So it's translated the same way whether it's absolute or construct. When it comes to numbers three through 10, those are nouns as well, but they do not agree in gender with any other related nouns. And when it comes to three through 10, the numbers are by definition plural, but when you look at their forms, they are singular. So three through 10 are plural by definition, but when you look at their forms, they are singular. So when you translate, bear in mind, they are plural by definition. Now, the numbers 2 through 10 can take pronominal suffixes. And when it does, it's translated using construct style form. Shinehem, two of them. Shitehen, two of you. Now, just like in Spanish, where we have uh, 16, 19, to form the numbers 11 through 19, you take 10 plus the relevant cardinal. You add them together. That's how you get 11, you get 12, you get 13, so on and so forth. It's just like how we do in Spanish. Now, rather than in Spanish where we put diez first, 10 goes last in Hebrew. Acha dasar, one plus 10, 11. Now, 11 and 12 both have alternate forms, both in the masculine and the feminine, so be aware of those. Both of the masculine forms of 11 here, achad asar or ashte asar. Achad asar 
Ashte Asar. Look at the feminine form, Achaf Esre, Ashte Esre. Now look at 12 masculine, Shene Asar, Shene Asar. Look at the feminine, Shate Esre, or Shate Esre. From there, the rest, 13 through 19, are pretty straightforward. 13, Shalosha Asar, Shalosh Esre. 14, Arbaa Asar, Arba Esre. Chamisha Asar, 15, Chamesh Esre. 15, Chisha Asar. 16, Sheish Esre. 16, Shiva Asar. 17, Shiva Esre. 17, Shimona Asar. 18, Shimone Esre. 18, Tisha Asar. 19, Tisha Esre. 19. Now when these words occur with a noun, usually the noun will be plural. Sometimes it's singular, but because of the context of the numbers, the cardinals involved, you will still translate the noun as plural. Shnei asar ish. Now that's literally 12 man. We're going to translate it 12 men. Hebrew makes multiples of 10 by simply taking the cardinal number for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and making it plural. The plural form of that cardinal number makes it a multiple of 10. So you've got your 10s, your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, your 90s. It's just going to add the plural form to each of those cardinal numbers. So for example, esrim, that's asar, but it's plural. Now it's 20. Remember, asar is 10. So to make it plural, 20. Shiloshim, 30. Arbaim, 40. Chamishim, 50. Shishim, 60. Shavim, 70. Shimonim, 80. Tishim, 90. Now, when we looked at our tens before, 11, 12, 13, and so on, we saw it as 1 plus 10. When we're dealing with 21, 22, 23, so on and so forth, it uses a different construction. It's not hard. It's either 1 and 20, 21, or it's the other way around, 20 and 1. Look at esrim va'achach, 20 and v 1, achach, 20 and 1. Or look at shanayam ushloshim, 2 and 30, or 32. Now, Hebrew does have cardinal numbers for 100 plus. There's, there's plenty of them to know. We have mea, 100. The construct is me'ath, plural, hundreds. Me'oth, we have 200. Now, this is going to be masculine plural from 100. Mathayim, hence math, maths, plural, maths, mathayim. To make 300 and beyond, you're going to take the cardinal number in its 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9 form plus... 100 in its plural form. And we said 100 in plural is meoth. So to make 300, what do you think it would be? Shalosh meoth. If that's what you guessed, you got it right. Three plus hundreds, 300, so on and so forth. 1,000 elif, because an elif is like an elephant, and an elephant weighs a thousand pounds. Okay, it may weigh more, I don't know, but it's a mnemonic device, okay? Cut me some slack. Now, the plural form, thousands, is alafim. Now, 2,000 looks like the plural form of, like, alafim, but it's spelled differently with different vowels, alfayim. So note the difference. One is the dual diphthong. One is not. One is the masculine plural ending. Don't get them mixed up. So to make 3,000, you do the same thing as we did before with the hundreds. You take the, the number for three and you add it to thousands in the plural form. Shalosheth alafim. 10,000 is rivava. 20,000 is the dual form using the diphthong rivothayim, 20,000. To make 30,000 and beyond, you do the cardinal number plus the plural form of 10,000, which is rivoth, shalosh rivoth, 30,000. And now we come to ordinal numbers, order, okay? 
first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. Hebrew uses masculine and feminine forms. First, we have Rishon, first, masculine. Rishona, first, feminine. Now, where does this come from? Well, you'll notice it's related to the cognate noun head, Rosh. Head meaning first. You get it? Once you get into second and following, they look very similar to what we've seen in the cardinal numbers, but the nouns are a little different. Second, Shane, masculine. Shanith, feminine. Third, Shilishi, masculine. Shilishith, feminine. Fourth, Ravi'i, masculine. Ravi'i, feminine. Fifth, Chamishi, masculine. Chamishith, feminine. Sixth, Shishi, masculine. Shashith, feminine. Seventh, Shavi'i, masculine. Shavi'ith, feminine. Eighth, Shamini, masculine. Shaminith, feminine. Ninth, Tishi'i, masculine. Tishi'ith, feminine. Tenth, Asiri, masculine. Asirith, feminine. These ordinal numbers are classified or they function as adjectives. When they function attributively, they will match in gender and definiteness. And they will typically follow the noun to which they are attached. Look at Yom Hashishi, the sixth day. Now this one doesn't match in definiteness, but look at Bayom Hashvi'i on the seventh day. Once you get beyond 10th, so 11th, 12th, so on and so forth. They just use the cardinal numbers. So you just have to know by context, ah, we're actually dealing with order. So we're going to change it from 11 to 11th. Ushlosh Esre Shana. This is not 13 years. This is 13th year and the 13th year. So context is important. It always is. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. This video focused on Hebrew numbers, those cardinals and ordinal numbers. Now, if you stick around and watch this video here, this video is focused on the Hebrew construct chain. Until next time.